Being a new hearing aid user can be a huge learning experience. So in this video, I'm gonna share six of the best hearing aid tips from experienced hearing aid users. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. If you are new to the world of hearing treatment or you're just starting your search for hearing aids to treat your hearing loss, then there can be a lot of things that can catch you off guard if you're unprepared. So I asked a bunch of experienced hearing aid users inside of the Hearing Loss Community Facebook group page to get tips and advice from them for individuals just like yourself who are new to the hearing loss treatment journey, and here are some of the best. Coming in at number six, Libby Bramson writes, wear them proudly. You will quickly discover that they are your connection to an enhanced world of sound and increased self-confidence. The stigma associated with hearing aids is quickly fading into history as we become a more tech-focused society. So if you're still shy about wearing hearing aids, don't be. After all, they are what will keep you connected to the sounds of life, boosting your self-confidence and your overall happiness. For tip number five, Paul Warden writes, keep spare batteries with you. Since most hearing aids still use disposable batteries, it is a terrific idea to keep some spare batteries on you or keep some spare batteries stashed in different places. So just in case your hearing aid batteries unexpectedly go out on you, you are not caught up a creek without a paddle. If you do find yourself in a situation where you don't have any spare hearing aid batteries, you can pretty much pick them up anywhere at any convenience store, gas station, or even grocery store. Now, if you're an individual who uses a rechargeable set of hearing aids, then it's probably a good idea to get yourself a spare charger. A lot of hearing aid manufacturers have chargers that are smaller than the types of chargers that you keep at home. So you can put them in your purse, you can put them in your vehicle, you can keep them at work. So if you ever find yourself in a situation where you run out of a charge, you're not too far away from being able to charge up your hearing aids really quick to get you through the rest of the day. And number four, Rick Gus Morrison simply writes, stay dry, and Rick is absolutely correct. Moisture is the enemy of electronics, and even though most hearing aids today are made with an IP67 or IP68 rating, which indicates that they are really high from a dirt and debris and moisture resistance standpoint, it is always a good idea to keep your hearing aids as dry as possible to ensure that they have the longest longevity and the highest sound quality possible. I typically recommend two different types of products for moisture removal. The first one is an active moisture removal system like the Zephyr Dry and Store. The Zephyr Dry and Store will force air through your hearing aids at 104 degrees and it will suck that moisture up inside of a dry brick and then you replace that dry brick every two months. This unit is great for individuals who sweat a lot and for individuals who may tend to jump in the pool or jump in the shower with their hearing aids because it is significantly more effective at removing moisture than just sticking your hearing aids in rice. The other option that you have is a passive moisture removal system like the Westone Hearing Aid Saver. This uses silica beads at the bottom of the container. When you take your hearing aids out and put them inside this container at night when you go to bed, it will pull any moisture from those hearing aids overnight. This container is really good because it's perfect for traveling. It's a little bit smaller than that bulkier Zephyr unit. And you can actually recharge those silica beads by taking them and putting them in the microwave when they get completely saturated. And you can dry them back out and make them just like new again. I will have these products linked in the description below if you do want to check them out for yourself. At number three, Karen Steert writes, start slow when using an aid for the first time. Two hours a day and work up. It takes time to adapt to new hearing aids, and it can be mentally fatiguing and even physically fatiguing by the end of the day. So do yourself a favor and start slow if you have to. Start out with a couple hours and work your way up by adding a half hour to an hour each day of wear time until you get to eight hours or over every single day. It can take your brain up to 30 days to adapt to hearing aid treatment. So you wanna make sure that you take that time slow, don't get discouraged, and by the end of that time, trust me, you will do significantly better with your hearing treatment. For tip number two, Chris Weirgau writes, you must receive several adjustments to get good hearing. Programming a hearing aid is not a one-shot deal. Inside of my clinic, I have my patients come back over the course of 45 days 
four different times. This is to program their hearing aids initially, reprogram their hearing aids over the course of that window, verify their programming using real ear verification, and even validating their performance using validated outcome measures. This is a lot of work to get those little computers that sit on and or inside of your ears to function at their maximal capacity, making sure that you can hear as effortly as possible. Do not get discouraged if your hearing care professional recommends that you come back for several visits to make sure that they get your programming right. In fact, it is a red flag if your hearing care professional doesn't request that you come back at least a few times in the first month or two to make sure that they're maximizing your hearing aid performance based on what your specific needs are. And tip number one is from Gary Huber, I hope I didn't butcher that name too bad, who writes, advocate for yourself. If you have a hearing loss, you need to be your biggest advocate. This means that if you are in a situation where you are struggling to hear, you need to speak up and ask either the individual or group of individuals who you are communicating with to change the way that they're communicating with you. Tell them that they need to increase the volume of their voice. Tell them that they need to face you and get your attention before they start talking to you. But it is your responsibility to make sure that your environment is set up the best it can possibly be for you to hear better. This means that if you're in a public venue, like a movie theater or a church and they do not have a hearing loop installed so you can use the telecoil inside of your hearing aids, then you need to rally other individuals who have hearing loss that go to those same places so you can encourage whoever is in charge of those facilities to get a hearing loop installed. Being an advocate for yourself also means that if you feel like you are not hearing your best with your hearing treatment, you need to go back to your hearing care professional and tell them that you don't feel like you're performing where you should be. And then they should be doing things like performing verification of your hearing aids to ensure that they are programmed correctly to your hearing loss prescription, and they should be doing some kind of a validated outcome questionnaire to see what your subjective performance is in the real world. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed those six fantastic tips from experienced hearing aid users. Just remember, the road to treatment success with hearing aids can be a long one and it can be a bumpy one. But just remember, if you follow the advice of the people who've come before you, there is absolutely no reason why you can't achieve a really high level of success with your hearing aids. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.